So Sheikh Safir Rahman, in his Kitab al-Rahiq al-Makhtoum, mentions, he says, Inna ula'ika al-kufar, that these disbelievers, lam yakunu sami'u kalam Allahi qabla thalik. Before this, they didn't hear the speech of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. A large quantity of them didn't. They didn't want to hear the Qur'an. And because they were Arabs and the language was theirs and the eloquence of the Qur'an was something that they understood and how it was structured, they knew that this was not poetry. These people had poets, poets amongst them. So they knew how poetry was. They knew this was a poetry. They also knew it was very eloquent, the way it spoke. لِأَنَّ أُسْلُوبَكُمُ الْمُتَوَاصِلَ كَانَ هُوَ الْعَمَلُ بِمَا تَوَاصَى بِهِ بَعْضُهُ الْمَعْضَى Their consistent practice in which they advised one another was what? لَا تَسْبَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ Do not listen to this Qur'an. Abandon it. Leave it. Turn away from it. That was their policy, he said. But فَلَمَّا بَاغَتَتْ بَاغَتَتْ بِتِلَاوَةِ هَذِهِ السُّورَةِ But when it suddenly came to their ears, they didn't expect it. They didn't want it. It was unexpectedly. The Quran hit their ears, penetrated their hearts. يعني سورة النجم. وقرأ آذانهم كلاما كلاما إلهي رائع خلاب لا يحاط بروعته وجلالته البيان. Eloquent in the way it's structured. When that hit their ears and their hearts, تَفَادَوْ عَمَّا هُمْ فِيهِ وَبَقِيَ كُلُّ وَاحِدِ الْمُصْغِيَةِ إِلَيْهِ Each and every one of them stood to their grounds and listened. They did not move from their positions. And after that, لَا يَخْطُرُ بِبَالِهِمْ شَيْءٌ سِوَى As they were listening to it. And the person who's reciting it is Nabi Allah Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام And he recited that you can possibly think of is nowhere close to the Prophet ﷺ. So they're hearing it from his mouth as he recites it. It takes them by shock and amazement. Nothing else is on their mind. Nothing comes to their mind other than this recitation. They're not preoccupied with any other matter. So he started the surah reciting it until he came to the end where Allah says, when he recited that death is close to you the hour is very very close you see it to be far but it's very close besides Allah there is not أَفَمِنْ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ تَعْجَبُونَ وَتَضْحَكُونَ وَلَا تَبْكُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ سَامِدُونَ And then recited the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ وَعْبُدُونَ When the Prophet recited that, they all fell into prostration. Safi al-Rahmani says, Sheikh Safi al-Rahmani says, ثُمَّ سَجَدَ دَيْ prostrated لَا يَتَمَالَكْ أَحَدُ النَّفْسَهُ حَتَّى خَرْوَ سَاجِدًا They fell into prostration. None of them could hold themselves back. All that they found was this command took them by surprise. As soon as they heard it, they fell into frustration. They couldn't hold themselves back. The command has now taken over. But the reality is, it was Ru'atul Haqq, he says. The truth is the beauty of the truth. The beauty of these words is what took them. And the arrogance, and this is the thing, brothers. Even atheists at one point, they, 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 the fitrah speaks. Even that, the fitrah speaks and it comes out. The thing that they deny. There's a, there's a phrase that they have for them. What is it? Foxhole something. Like, what was it called? You can help me here. And in the last moments, the atheist realizes يعني, the truth. A lot of them, they come back. Yeah? There's another statement there and say, and when reality touches them and they are the last moments of death, they uh, they come back to reality. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ذُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّةً وَأَشَدَهُمْ عَلَى أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَى شَهِدَنَا أَنْ تَقُولُ يَوْمَ الْدِيَمَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنَا And Allah took a covenant with each and every one of us. 
it's in our fitrah to know what? Fitrah Allah in the فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِخَبْقِ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ دِيلُ الْقَيِّمُ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعَلَمُونَ The fitrah, the natural disposition is fixed inside everybody. مَا مِنْ مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا وَهُوَ يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ فَأَبَوَاهُ يَهُوْ وِدَاهِ يَهُوْ يُنَصِّرَانِ يَهُوْ يُمَجِّسَانِ Every simple person is what? He has that fitrah. So that fitrah kicks in. There was a, a discussion between a militant atheist who is currently alive. I ask Allah to guide him to Islam. Uh, Richard Dawkins, the author of the Kitab, The God Delusion. That was a discussion he was having with one of the journalists um, uh, in Oxford. And as he's talking, Richard Dawkins says, yes, I do not deny that at times I am taken by surprise and awe when I look at the sky and the stars and the galaxies and when I look at the sophistication of science and the way things are, I always do think there is a, uh, a designer who designed all of this. I know, that's the fitrah, that's nothing else speaking. That which is telling you this, when you look at all this, it's the what? It's nothing other than the, the fitrah. So even the non-Muslim, sometimes he, yeah, he feels the, the power of the Qur'an. Recently, there was a person who took all the scriptures being recited by the best reciters, put them all together, and the Quran was in the list of those scriptures that were recited, the Bible, the, 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 the Torah, whatever, all of it was recited. And the Quran was amongst those which were recited. I only wish that they chose Fusari for the, for the uh, reciter of the Quran. Alakulli, they chose an amazing reciter. But the difference each one had was, and the comments you can even see <clears throat> the non Muslims <clears throat> are saying there's a difference to the Quran when it's recited. I'm telling you, brothers, if I wrote an Arabic word, sentence, or a paragraph, and I told you to read it, it will never come as beautiful as the Quran. The Quran's milk, for brothers, is just in it. I, this Imam of this masjid is something else. Allahumma barik. The Imam that leads us in this masjid always leaves me in amazement when I hear the Quran. Like I've never heard the surah in my life when he reads it. But Allah preserve him and honor him for dunya wal akhirah. If anybody just listen to this Shaykh's recitation and the Quran that he's reciting, sir, the Quran is mu'jiz. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a miracle in just those words. Sah brothers. Imagine you heard it from the mouth of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet recited it for you. That's what happened to these people. They heard it from the Prophet ﷺ. So brothers, honestly speaking, I've said this before, it's very important you have a very strong relationship with the Qur'an. If a day comes in your life and you have not recited the Qur'an, you are prohibited. You are missing out. If a day comes out and you haven't read anything from the Qur'an, it's not a pleasant day that went by. Something, even if it's small, from the Qur'an, read it. Have a bond and a relationship with this book. There is nothing greater than the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No human being's speech, no lecture, no reminder is as powerful as the Qur'an. And honestly, when you listen to it, just today I was listening to uh, the recitation of Husari, uh, of Surah Al-Qasas, the Riwayat Warsh, Husari reciting it. I'm taken back. The milk in just listening to the Quran. Sometimes, honestly, I just sit down and I say, should I just leave everything and just literally spend the rest of my life in just the Qur'an and nothing else? Abandon every other responsibility of teaching and giving classes and just the Qur'an. So brothers, it's, it's a very important thing to do. Wallahi, the Qur'an is the best thing. It's a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.